Part two. You are going to hear an introduction to a library by George Martin, who is the head librarian. First, look at questions eleven to sixteen. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions eleven to sixteen. Good morning, and welcome to the main library of the University of British Columbia. My name is George Martin, and I'm the head librarian. And happy to give you a brief introduction to our library. I guess I'm qualified. I've been working here since 1961, back in the days when the only electrical or electronic stuff here was the lights. Oh, and the phones, of course. Mechanical typewriters and slide rules. Then, no fancy laptops and cell phones. Computers in a library? No way. Everything was on paper. If you needed to find something, you went to the card index. And if that didn't help, you asked one of the staff. And if that didn't work, you told your professor that you couldn't write the essay because the library didn't have the book you needed. My, you students have it so easy nowadays. We've got about fifteen computer terminals on each of our four floors. If you know the title or the author, then you can find out if we've got it in seconds, and if we do, where it is. If we haven't got it, then you can find out if the public libraries and other university libraries in Vancouver and Barnaby have it. Now you know that library books are arranged according to the numbers on the back of each book. Does anyone know the name of this numbering system? Right, the Dewey Decimal Classification System, which was invented by Melville Dewey, an American librarian, not John Dewey the philosopher. Now look at questions seventeen to twenty. As the talk continues, answer questions seventeen to twenty. In Melville's day, book classification systems were in a real mess, so he decided to do something about it. And around eighteen seventy-six, came up with the system we still use today. Look up there, and you can see a list of basic categories: zero, 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 generalities, which includes all sorts of things. Encyclopedias, news media, etc., etc. Then a hundred, philosophy and psychology. Two hundred, religion. Three hundred, social sciences, and so on up to nine hundred, geography and history. With over four million books, actually nearer to five million now in our library, we have a lot to thank Melville for. Now, if you look up to your right, you can see the layout of the library. It's very logical. We start down here on the first floor, or the ground floor for our British cousins, with three zeros, generalities, and so on up to the fourth floor with all the eight hundreds and nine hundreds. By the way, you won't find books on medicine and dentistry here. They're all over in the me medical library, just to the east of the medical school. Now, if you look at the plan of the second floor. You can see we have a CD and DVD library. The music collection covers just about everything that we call serious, from Bach and Beethoven, folk music, blues, early rock and roll, jazz, and more. But sorry, no punk, heavy metal, rap, or hip hop yet. For Oriental music like Peking Opera, you'll have to go to the Asian Studies Center or Chinatown. A word about taking books out: the usual lending period is two weeks. But a few books in great demand can only be taken out for two days, and I suggest you try to return books on time. The fine is a dollar a day for the first week, and a dollar a day thereafter. That's a lot of beer money. One last thing: your fancy new smart student card is also your library card, and you can also use it to pay at the student cafeteria. So don't lose it, or you'll starve to death without any library books. Okay. I guess that's enough here. Let's move up to the second floor.